If you've ever seen a photo of an old ship like Titanic, you'll probably notice how smooth and straight the front of the ship is, like it's designed to cut easily through the water. But modern ships look, well, different. They have a strange alien looking protrusion jutting out in front of them. This is called the bulbous bow. And this thing is designed to drastically reduce drag as the ship moves through the water. But how? You'd think that adding a whole structure to that nice, knife-like edge would ruin the whole thing. But weirdly, the engineering oddity results in a faster, more efficient ride. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm your friend Mike Brady from Ocean Liner Designs, and here is how bulbous bows work. Ships have looked very similar for centuries. Now there are a few guiding principles that outline the way that a ship should be designed and built that our seafaring ancestors had first figured out when they went to sea all those centuries ago. Obviously, to get the most speed out of a boat or ship, it had to be smooth or streamlined. Now this led to the study of hydrodynamics at sea, how objects interact with the water and actually move through it. Refining hydrodynamics took place through the centuries and ships became sleeker and faster because of it. By the mid 1800s, the basic shape of a ship's hull had been established and that would remain largely unchanged for decades to come. Now it's not as simple as it sounds. A ship has to be stable, so it needs to be large and broad, but it also has to be fast, so it needs to be long and sleek. Engineers found a strong balance with the tea clippers and merchant barks of the 1800s, which were designed for pure speed. They were long and slim, but with deep, bulging hulls that could carry tons of cargo like grains, spices, and wool. Now the shape of the clipper's hull was carried over to passenger ships of the era. In fact, if you compare the stern of an 1800s clipper like Cutty Sark with that of Titanic from around 40 or 50 years later, you'll see some striking similarities. In fact, even the cross-section of both ships shows those similarities, even though Titanic was almost 50 times larger than Cutty Sark. A ship's shape had become standardised and formulaic. Typically, to heighten the ship's speed, they featured sharp lines at the front, the bow or forward end designed to easily slice through the ocean as neatly as possible. But in the early 1900s, the world's navies accidentally stumbled across something rather strange. At the turn of the century, warships with rams below the waterline were a huge fad, because it was thought they could destroy an enemy ship faster by colliding with them than just shooting at them. Battleships were built with huge, jutting rams, which did exactly as they were supposed to, but they had an unexpected, weird benefit. Tests showed that warships with rams actually moved more efficiently through the water, that is to say, their engines didn't need to work as hard and burn as much fuel to go as fast. US Naval architect David W. Taylor first proposed what he called a bulbous forefoot with the USS Delaware, the battleship from 1910, which featured what looked like a ram, but which was actually something else entirely. Now, Taylor had tested his models at the US Navy Experimental Model Basin, and the results were sufficient for the US Navy to incorporate them in their new battleship. Now, it would take some years yet for the bulbous bow to catch on, specifically in the late 1920s, with Germany's introduction of the ocean liners Bremen and Europa, speed demons of their age, and both featuring prominent bulbous bows. So what was happening that created such efficiency from the bulbous bow? Well, we know that unlike traditional bows that cut through the water with a sharp leading edge, the bulbous bow extends forward below the waterline. Now as a ship moves through the water, it displaces that water around its hull, creating a system of waves that include both bow and stern waves. Now these waves are a form of energy expenditure and contribute significantly to the resistance a ship experiences while it moves, known as wave making resistance. The larger and faster the ship, the more pronounced these effects can be, leading to increased fuel consumption and poor efficiency. The ship simply has to work harder to propel itself through the ocean. But the bulbous bow works by exploiting some of these principles. As the bulbous bow moves through the water, it creates its own set of waves. Now, when designed correctly for a ship's typical operating speed and displacement, the waves generated by the bulbous bow intersect with the waves created by the ship's main bow behind them in such a way that they cancel each other out through something called destructive interference. 
More specifically, the troughs of the waves generated by the bulbous bow align with the crests of the bow waves, leading to a reduction in overall wave height. Now this wave cancellation effect significantly reduces the wave making resistance encountered by the ship. With lower resistance, the ship requires less power to maintain its speed, leading to improvements in fuel efficiency and allowing for higher speeds or longer ranges on the same amount of fuel. Now this is particularly effective at the ship's designed cruising speed, where the phase and amplitude of the waves are precisely tuned for optimal interference. Now, Taylor had figured this out way back in the early 1900s, but it would take even more time for the bulbous bow to evolve as designers and builders became more daring. Early bulbous bows were teardrop shaped and subtle. Everything from ocean liners to battleships like Bismarck featured this style of bow. But years after World War II, the bow began to evolve even further. The shape became more pronounced, more bulbous. The effects on drag reduction were even more dramatic. Today, bulbous bows are huge. Queen Mary 2's is about the length of a small yacht itself. The effectiveness of the bulbous bow is highly dependent on its shape, size, and the speed of the ship, and it's most efficient at specific speeds and loading conditions. Now, naval architects designed the bow with those factors in mind, tailoring its dimensions to the ship's specific operational profile. So the bulbous bow's size and the angle at which it protrudes are critical in determining how the generated wave will interact with the bow wave. At speeds lower or higher than the ship's design speed, the gains from that bulbous bow actually diminish. See, at low speeds, the bulb may even increase resistance thanks to increased surface area and frictional drag. Now, this design peculiarity means that the bulbous bow is best suited for vessels that operate at a relatively constant speed, like cargo ships and cruise ships. Now, obviously, in an era where fuel efficiency and environmental impact are of the paramount concern, the bulbous bow and the efficiency that it offers are a big deal. By reducing the wave-making resistance, ships consume less fuel, leading to lower emissions of greenhouse gases and pollutants. Now, this makes the bulbous bow a surprising, essential feature in the drive towards more sustainable maritime operations. In fact, the concept of the bulbous bow continues to evolve, even to this day, with advances in computational fluid dynamics and experimental hydrodynamics. Researchers and naval architects are pushing engineering to its limits, using these tools to refine bulb designs, making them more effective across a broader range of speed and conditions. Testing's being done on variable bulbous bows that can actually be adjusted, repositioned to optimize performance for changing load conditions and speeds, this would mean that, say, if a ship were going far slower than its cruising speed, the bulb could actually be retracted, reducing drag and overcoming that increased friction that we talked about earlier. Newer cruise ships like Celebrity Edge have removed the protruding bulbous bow entirely, opting instead for an inverted bow that slopes backwards. A move that provides a longer waterline with less drag, but which also results in a ship more likely to take waves over the bow. It's an interesting move, and we'll see if it catches on. Like it or loathe it, the bulbous bow is here to stay. By reducing wave making resistance through the strategic use of wave interference, the bulbous bow has enhanced fuel efficiency, reduces environmental impact, and improves the operational performance of ships. Unfortunately, it just looks a little bit weird. But that's okay, because when you're up top on your cruise ship, sipping pina coladas and getting caught in the rain, the bulbous bow and its efficiencies should probably be the last thing on your mind anyway. Ladies and gentlemen, it's your friend Mike Brady from Ocean Liner Designs. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a comment below. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel because we get new videos out weekly. If you want to support my work and get really cool perks like behind the scenes and early access, please visit my Patreon in the link in the description below or sign up as a YouTube member. Come and join the crew. And as always, stay safe, stay happy, and I'll see you again next time.